I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. This video is part one of my Jewelry Designs from Nature series. I'll show you how I developed the designs for eight jewelry pieces using the Queen Anne's Lace Flower, Soybean Pods, Poppy Seed Pods, and the Coreopsis Flower. The purpose of this series is to focus on how jewelry designs evolve from the photos through to the finished pieces. I will show you some jewelry techniques, but our main emphasis in this video is on the design development and not the techniques used in building the jewelry. Let's get designing. The Queen Anne's Lace Flower has some interesting shapes and forms. I'm going to zoom in on this part of the Queen Anne's Lace, and this part has been folded up on itself. So I'd like to zoom in on those interesting forms and try to emphasize those in this design. I'd like to add a dome in there to give it more bulk. So let's take a look at those forms and make those. I'll show you how they are made. First, you want to ball some sterling silver wires. Then get them bent into a U shape ready for soldering. Solder four of them together with hard solder. Then add a stem to it with medium solder. And there we have our form ready to go. So we'll bend them into shape and I'll repeat this four more times. Now we can put these forms together for our design. I'll add a back sheet for the bezel stone setting. Add a bale to the back in the chain and clean it up and we're all finished. The Queen Anne's Lace, when it's closed up, is a real conglomeration of shapes and forms. I'd like to use the whole shape for this particular design and use that convoluted idea with sterling silver wires and maybe some beaded wires put in also. Add a little half dome to the bottom and that pretty well completes the design. The Queen Anne's Lace Flower, when it's open, is really an explosive uh, design and we're going to use some of these back pieces and kind of U-shapes and simplify those and use that explosive idea for this design. Lends itself to some forged wires and those U-shapes and some other lines going out from it. We'll curl those over to give it a little visual interest. Add a disc to the back to hold all the pieces together and maybe add a stone setting in the middle. This shows you a side view so you can see that the piece is really very three-dimensional. The back piece and the textured back piece gives a nice visual look also. A soybean pod has some beautiful lines running through the pod itself. Let's take advantage of those nice swooping lines through the pod 
and accentuate those, curl them around, turn them into some forged wires, bring them back onto themselves, use maybe some domes in there to represent the peas themselves, add a stone setting, and you're all set for this design. The soybean pod in this configuration gives us a whole different look. Let's take this and start abstracting it, and it seems to lend itself toward sheet metal. So I'm going to use fold forming technique in this piece and use it sheet metal and a little bit of wire. We use the P itself or the middle, repeat that several times, maybe put a couple domes in there and a stone setting and pull it together with a wire coming up for a bale. This shows you the 3D quality that the fold forming gives you. The back is textured really interestingly. A little split there for the pea pod. And the stone setting finalizes the whole design. The poppy seed pod is really an interesting seed pod. Let's zoom in on the round part of the pod. I really like the scallops that are around the edges of it, and I think I'm going to emphasize those scallops and try to make an interesting design by maybe enlarging those a little bit. Let's take and enlarge those, and all of a sudden it starts taking on an interesting shape that may be a little domed piece with these scalloped edges. Maybe add some jump rings to the outside, add more visual interest. So we'll start with a domed textured sheet with a textured wire soldered around the outside edge. This will give it more three-dimensional quality. Then we'll add another textured silver wire on the inside of that dome. The scalloped dome is sawed out with the jeweler's saw, and that really gives it a really interesting shape, and that will go on top of the other domed piece to give it a real nice 3D quality. Let's not forget about those jump rings that are going around the outside. How do we get those on and maybe add some other visual interest? I'm going to drill some holes in the domed piece and then slide those through. But before we do that, I want to put in a kind of a scalloped wire on the inside, solder it, and then texture that scalloped dome first. I want to put a little dome on top of the scalloped dome, and you should drill the holes through when you're soldering a small piece like this so you don't encapsulate an air pocket. Dome it over a dapping block and texture it with a center punch. Now let's add those jump rings. We'll slide the wires through the holes that were drilled and bring them into the middle of the design. Flip it over and solder them from the back. Then we can take those wires, straighten them out, and we're ready for the scallop dome to be soldered on. Solder the scallop dome and then make a bale on the back and this is a dome using the same theme with scalloped edges so the chain can go through the bale. Liver of sulfur it and clean it up and this design is finished. This shows the real 3D quality of the design. The little arches on the poppy seed pod are real interest. I'd like to use those as my main emphasis for this design. We'll take those little arches and scallop them with maybe a wire, put two together, uh, kind of use a repetition and rhythm design, 
flip it over on its side and maybe put a dome in the middle with a forged wire coming down through the inside and through the middle of the whole piece. The forged wires are soldered together with a jump ring on the top soldered in there and then a domed piece is soldered to it with that scalloped wire to emphasize more three-dimensional quality and to keep that rhythm and repetition going in from the side hemispheres that have that scalloped wire soldered to them. Bring the whole piece together, solder it together, and we're all set. The Coreopsis flower has some interesting petals and pistils and stamens. Let's zoom in on those and abstract those a little bit and see what kind of a neat design that we can come up with. Take those petals and possibly make them into more three-dimensional shapes and pierce them out with a jeweler's saw. Give some nice positive and negative feel. Use the pistils and stamen as a emphasis and maybe add some leaves to it. Let's use the fold forming process to add the leaves. I'd like to show you some of the processes on this one. We'll cut out the main shapes with the jeweler saw and then the piercing we have to center punch it and drill it through and that way we can saw out the inner parts of the petals. All those edges should be smoothed off with a file and the inner piercings we can polish those up using a burnisher. Solder on a textured piece under the base one, saw it off, make the petals more three-dimensional using the stakes and a dapping block. Texture the back sheet with a nail set. Then we're ready to make the leaves. Again, I'm going to be using a fold forming technique here, and if you're not familiar with that, please check out my series on fold forming in the playlist. Open up that leaf and twist it, and makes a beautiful three-dimensional leaf. The pistols and stamens can be some round sterling wires with bald ends. The back sheet has a couple extra pieces of shot soldered onto it, and then we solder the whole piece together from the back. Soldering from the back leaves us a little room for error in case we need to clean up those spots. All the spots have been cleaned up and pickled, and then ready to liver sulfur and finish. I hope you have picked up some ideas for your jewelry projects. Open your eyes to nature, let your imaginations go wild, and you will be surprised how creative your jewelry projects will become. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of the next videos in my Designs from Nature series. I'm Greg Greenwood. See you next time.